My name is Mohammed Umar. I'm a Palestinian journalist, 22 years old. I grew in Rafah refugee camp, and in a middle family, which is consists of seven brothers and one sister. I've started to work at the age of six years old, since my father was simply in, the, in jail. My father was in jail, in the Israeli jail, for 12 years just simply because he asked for his right. I have been working in different places because I'm the oldest for my family. So I've started to work at the age of six because there was no way for me to get money to my family. So this is the way how I started my life. Then I moved to working into other places where I start also to work as a translator for different journalists, foreign journalists, including Sky News, BBC, <coughs> and CNN. I've started writing at the age of 17 and 18 to write and to tell the story about what's going on in my life. To write and to tell the world about what's happening, what we are facing every day by the Israeli occupation forces. Just to inform the people, not to use a gun, but to use a camera in a very simple way, just to take photos and to share them with people and to let them judge at the end. The place where I'm living from is Rafa refugee camp. This is the map of the Gaza Strip here. Gaza Strip, as all of us know, it's a very <coughs> tiny place, which is about 1 million point four population living. And I'm living in the southern part of Gaza Strip. At the end of the map, you can see Rafah camp. This is the area where I'm living, close to the borderline with Egypt. This is the area also of Rafah refugee camp. The area where I used to live is called Block O area. It used to be Block O, but now it is uh, totally flattened by the Israeli bulldozers. Because the Israelis were uh, trying to make the wall between Egypt and the Gaza Strip. So they can make a room for the wall, they demolish our houses. They kick us out from the houses so they can make a wall for the wall. Demolish houses. It was around three o'clock while I was coming from the university. I was coming from the university and then I found someone telling me, Muhammad, where are you going? I answered him, I'm going home. Then I walked for some few meters. Somebody else is waking, is stopping me again, and he's saying, Muhammad, where are you going? Then I said, I'm going home. And he told me, you don't know? Then I told him what? Then he told me, no, no, nothing, nothing. Then I just walked for some few meters. And then the third person is asking me, which is not usual, that people ask me in this street, where are you going? Because normally I go to home and no one asks me where are you going. Then this person is asking me, Muhammad, where are you going? Then I said home. And he told me, but you have to watch out, be careful. I was just turning to the house, crossing like this and turning to the house. Then I found the two floor. There is no house of two floor at all. There is only Israeli bulldozer barking instead of the house, completely. And there is no even, I've lost my computer, my CD, computers, where I put all the photos, important photos to document what's going on there. My clothes, my everything. I just have my school bag and my ID and the clothes in me. That's all. That's all. And even what's worse, that they dig a hole, they dig holes in near the borderline so they can burn the, the, the furniture and the ruins of the houses, of the demolished houses. This is what they did to my house. I'm not saying that they did this to my, to my, to my uh, relatives and to my neighbors. They did the same to my relatives, but I'm talking to me about my house. What is worse, the news that I get is my mother in the hospital. My mother is in the hospital. Then I asked, what's the reason? Then they said, the Israeli bulldozer it seems that he, he didn't want to come from the, the front of the house, from the, from the back of the house, so he decided to come from <coughs> the door of the house, where my mother had no way to run out from the house. Mm. My brother, Hussam. 
he got killed while he's 17 years old. He was going to the school. He was just going to the school peacefully, like any kid going to the school. <coughs> Around 6 o'clock in the morning, he was not carrying a gun. He was not going to fight because he, his mind, he's the most peaceful guy I've ever seen. He's just peaceful. He doesn't go and uh, fight. He doesn't go and uh, do anything. He had nothing to do with any. And what, what is worse, that he was killed by seven bullets. Seven bullets in his neck, in his head, in his chest, and all over his body. And what is worse than this? Our neighbor, someone called with that, she is 32 years old. She was coming to evacuate his body while he's lying down back there. While she was coming to evacuate his body, the Israeli shot at air. The Israeli snipers from the top of the watching towers and the buildings, they shot at air, leaving her dead as well. She got killed. Now, my brother got killed by seven bullets and then also the women who went to help him. A woman, she went to help a child, she went to help a child or a kid to take him to the hospital. To take him to the hospital, she just got killed as well. She was just coming to help. Her husband came to help as well, to evacuate his, uh, the body of his uh, <coughs> wife. He was just approaching her body to take her, and then they shot him in his neck. While he got injured, and in his kneecap. Now, three people lying down on the floor, full of blood, and still. His brother came to evacuate them, just to help. Just to help. They thought, I might have a luck that you, I go and dig them up. It didn't work. Because he also got injured in his leg and other part of his body. He got injured, they target him, they, did. they know that those people, this people is not a militant. He is coming to take people to the hospital, to evacuate people to the hospital. Then they, they, they shoot at him. Asma and Abud, the little two children, when they saw their parents. All this because of my brother. I feel guilty for some time, you know, because all this family, they were gone because of my brother, because she just wanted to help my brother. International Solidarity Movement, they just came to help Palestinians. They came to help Palestinians and to make our life easier. They came to protect our houses. But they were not respected. Rachel Corey got killed by the Israeli army. American citizen got killed by the Israeli army. They drove her body. Tom Harandel, a British, uh, British activist, peace activist, he got killed. And also Miller, James Miller, he also was killed by the Israeli army while he was filming, a British filmmaker. Rachel Corey, this is a photo that I've taken by for her while she was in Gaza. I met with her and she was quite helpful to support Palestinians and to support and to protect their houses. This is Jenny. I zoom here, I zoom in, and it was most of the times with IS, I'm covering their, their events, I'm covering the attacks. So this is a photo that they take. And there is Jenny standing to the bulldozer and saying, Jenny is from Ireland, and she's saying, here we are, the International Solidarity Movement. We are watching what a human we are watching the, all the crimes you are committing against the humanity. And just simply, the driver with the bulldozer, take the land, take the under hair, all the, all the ground under hair, the sand, and throw her away. Rachel Corey, in the hospital. Rachel Corey, the American citizen, being killed in Rafa refugee camp. Rachel Corey, being covered by the American flag, in Rafah refugee camp. The children went and take the streets on. They were not, they couldn't believe that Rachel Corey, the American citizen, got killed. They don't believe it at all because it's the first time that there is American who killed in Rafah refugee camp. The most beautiful face of America, Rachel Corey. This is Rachel Corey who got killed also by the Israeli bulldozers. Rachel Corey, when I take this photo, I had four days without eating, without eating food because I can't believe. Rachel Corey, a few hours, she was talking to me and she was saying, can you help me in some, in some Arabic signs? I need to, to learn Arabic and I need to write some signs and to protest to ask the Israelis to stop the human rights, uh, not violating the human rights in Rafah Fiji camp. 
Anti-Semitism. 